Hi everybody, my name is Turga Attikin and I work as a fast track solution architect within Microsoft Dynamics 365 team. In this SEG talk, I'm going to present how we can quickly create segments within Dynamics 365 marketing from a simple spreadsheet using Dynamics 365 marketing and data source functionalities. As you may already know, Dynamics 365 marketing has a great segmentation engine which allow marketers to set up their campaign audiences. Marketers can easily define segments like female wine enthusiastics over 40 years old living in San Francisco by using its comprehensive query options. And these queries are executed against Dynamics 365 marketing database and defines contacts to be used within any campaign. But sometimes marketers just gather their business contacts via Excel files or spreadsheet files. And those incoming contacts may or may not be already in the database. Today, I'm going to show you how marketers can include those contacts to their campaigns quickly. Before we proceed with the demo details, there are a couple of important things to consider. Firstly, as I mentioned briefly, Dynamics 365 Marketing Segmentation Engine works on records, which are already present within Dataverse or Customer Insights. There is currently no functionality to directly use any kind of spreadsheets. Secondly, segmentation query should always target a contact entity. Of course, it is possible to use other entities, including custom ones, but contact is the mandatory one. Also, there are two types of segments, static and dynamic. Static segments are populated manually and more appropriate for one-shot quick campaigns. Dynamic segments are more suitable for long running campaigns where campaign automatically executed against newly created contacts. Lastly, but, but not least, spreadsheets can contain duplicate or existing contacts. And those kind of files should be validated using the power of duplicate detection rules, alternate keys, or even custom plugins. In this demo, for again, for simplicity reasons, I'm going to use the alternate key approach. As a first step, I'm going to customize contact entity and add a custom field. And that field identifies each contact that is a part of a given spreadsheet. Then I'm going to create an alternate key on the email address field. This step is is required to allow update for existing contacts in the database using the import tool. And then I'm going to prepare the spreadsheet for the import by adding a column for the custom field. And next, I'm going to use the out of the box data words import tool to migrate contacts. And um, finally, after importing all these contacts, I'm going to use the segmentation module and segmentation engine and i'm going to create a segment that finds all contacts included in the spreadsheet and then we will be finally ready to use those contacts within our customer journeys demo only covers basic functionality for simplicity purposes but feel free to enhance it according to your needs and let's start the demo by customizing the contact entity just to save some time um, I mean, by the way, here is the maker portal of Power Apps, and you are seeing the contact entity and all the columns which are defined within the contact entity. And uh, just to save some time, I have already created our custom field, which is called reference code. And I mean, I have created this one as a text field, but you can create it um, as uh, however you want. Um, and the next I have defined the um, key, contact key here, and it is the email key, alternate key, and what it does is it is just creating a primary key within the um, within the database, and this is important for for the import tool. We are going to see how we are going to define the alternate key during the import later on, and after we define all these uh, all the keys and then the column. We can prepare our spreadsheet 
So let's imagine that you have gathered that spreadsheet from one event and just for demo purposes, let's name it as Ignite 2021 event. So we have gathered these five contacts and what I'm going to do is to just add another column here in order to uh, represent our new custom field, so which is called reference code. And I'm just going to mark these contacts as Ignite 2021 contacts. So I'm just going to fill those one out very quickly. And I'm just going to save the file. Um, the first four contacts are already in the database, but the last one uh, is not. So after the import, we are going to see that existing contacts will be updated with the new reference code and the, the, there will be also a new contact created. So let's, let's move on with the import functional team. I'm going to open my view and then I'm clicking on the import from CSV button. Just be mindful here that you should import using using this the new uh, import experience, the out of the box or legacy import functionality would not work for our scenario. What I'm going to do is to just select the file that I have created for the import. And I'm going to click next. And I need to select our alternate key as email. And then I just need to define the data delimiter, which is, I mean, there's there's no data delimiter in my on my file. And field delimiter is comma operator. And first row all contains the column headings as we saw. And I just click on review mapping. So um, you can map the columns in the spreadsheet with the columns in the dataverse of the system uh, intelligently does it for me. So this everything is here. I don't need to even map those columns because it just matches according to the column names. And then I'm just finishing the import. So the data has been submitted for import import operation and the import takes uh, place um, asynchronously and uh, in the background. So I can even track the progress of the import. And after the import is completed, then I should be able to see my contacts here under my, my active contacts because uh, the owner of the new contacts or the existing contacts are me. So as you can see, the existing contacts are updated with the new reference code. And then I can go to the uh, newly created contacts and you can also see the reference code um, here. So my contacts are ready in the database. And as a next step, I'm going to just create the segment to find out those contacts. So I'm going to create a new static segment. Just name it as Ignite or my Ignite 21 contacts. And I just save and close. And what I should do is just to define the query. And uh, in the query, I need to select the attribute as reference code. And I'm going to tell system that it should retrieve the contacts where reference code is Ignite 2021. And before I find those contacts, I can even estimate the size of these um, of these set member set. And as you can see, there will be five contacts. And I'm just going to click on find button and it will find me all the contacts which are related to that query. And here you can see it found all the contacts that I had recently imported. By the way, on some occasions you may need to wait a couple of minutes in order to contacts to be reflected in the segmentation engine. Um, and then you should be able to select those contacts and I can see my contacts are there and what I would like to do is to 
just click on add all button and all these contacts are right now added to my contact. Here you can see that all the five contacts are added already. And um, once everything is done, by the way, perhaps maybe I have other files to import. I can do the same and I can add those contacts by query. So um, I mean, you can even add other contacts from other segments as well by using the query. But anyways, once we are ready, we just need to go live with the segment and then our segment will be ready to use in any kind of customer journey. OK, uh, cool. We have seen how we can do the scenario and then I would like to just go back to my presentation. And I would like to just continue. Um, you may find more details uh, on this scenario on our public documentation website. You can see how you can import your course from CSV file. You can you can understand how alternate keys and duplicate detection work works during import. And uh, there are also a couple of uh, useful resources for you to review, including our release notes, which, which are always useful. And that's it. I hope it was a useful Tech Talk for you. Thank you very much for listening in.